Bob the Lobster is ready for some watery fun with today's game, Raft Rider, for your Atari 2600. And looking at this label, it seems that that little beaver is up to no good. Let's go ahead and take Raft Rider. Let's pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. <laughs> Raft Rider was published by the Quaker Oats owned US Games and carries a copyright year of 1982. According to Moby Games, it was programmed by Dave Hampton, who is also credited with programming Qbert for the 2600, which I reviewed in episode 295. The manual opens with the following. White water everywhere, and hidden in the strong current are any number of dangers lying in wait to capsize your log raft. Your mission is to make your way downstream as far as possible, avoiding treacherous rocks, feisty moose, and sections of trees which have been cut down by a pesky beaver. Skillful maneuvering is not without rewards, however, because there are also gold nuggets appearing in the river, which, when touched, can be accumulated to extend your trek into the wilderness. So put on your coonskin cap, get on your raft, and ride the white water to glorious high scores. Go ahead, get your feet wet, just try to keep the rest of you dry. Raft Rider is a horizontally scrolling rafting game for one player only. The difficulty is affected by the difficulty switches. When the left difficulty switch is in the A position, the river will move faster than when it's in the B position. When the right difficulty switch is in the A position, the moose will move in the river, but he stays still when it's in the B position. The goal of the game is to travel as far as you can, racking up points based on how far you travel. You tap up or down on the joystick to move in an arc in the direction you tapped. To stop early in your arc, you can press left. If you hit an object in the river or the shoreline, you sink, losing a life. Sometimes gold nuggets will show up. If you are lined up perfectly and touch them with the tip of your pole by pressing right, you will pick them up. If you pick up three, you get an extra life, up to a maximum of four. But if you are even slightly off, it is possible to hit the gold with your raft and sink. Graphically speaking, the game looks solid. I even like how when you see the beaver, he will run off screen to chop down a tree to sink that you will see shortly thereafter. Sound and music wise, there's a really nice musical ditty to open the game, but the sounds aren't anything that special. However, they do help indicate when a moose will appear. Family friendly wise, the game would most likely get an E for everyone rating if it was released today. At the time I researched on eBay including shipping, loose copies were going for $7 to $12 and complete copies were going for $35 to $40. So what do I think of Raft Rider? This game takes a little getting used to, especially since you move in arcs instead of going straight up and down. It also takes a while to learn how to judge if you'll run into a rock or not. And picking up the gold for me was way too hard. I think simply touching it with your raft should have counted, but there were many times I was just slightly off and ended up sinking instead, so personally it became more trouble than it was worth. But with all that being said, after I got used to the game, I found it surprisingly refreshing and even a little bit relaxing. Once you get a hang of it, there really isn't much to it, but it's such a unique approach for a 2600 title that it's definitely a game I could see myself playing again in the future. So where am I going to rank Raft Rider? If there was a little more to the game, and if getting the gold was easier, this would be much higher, but as it is, it's going into the 60s with some other solid titles. I do like Ghostbusters more at 64, but I will put this over Amidar and Spider Droid at 65. So out of the 179 games I've now ranked for the Atari 2600, Raft Rider is avoiding a moose and landing in the 65 position. Raft Rider is a refreshing change of pace on the 2600. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. Check out some of my many other videos. And sign up at patreon.com slash gamer just like Matthew E. did, to support the show and gain access to exclusive perks. I'd also like to thank Atari Spot on Twitter for trading me this game to review. Thank you, Atari Spot. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care and watch out for moose.